Okay, I want to tell you about um, charging and discharging capacitors. Um, this is going to be part one. We're going to start out just conceptually what, what happens, and then we'll attach the math to it um, a little later in a different video. Okay, so um, here is a capacitor. It's a capacitance C, and um, we're going to have it in series with a resistor R and a switch. And our capacitor is going to be charged up, um, let's say, an initial charge of Q0. And um, th this is about discharging a capacitor. So um, we have some uh, voltage across here. And right now, before I close this switch, you know, Kirchhoff's loop rule still has to be obeyed. So when I, there's an electric field right here. And um, so if I start here in the, in the loop and I go up, if I go, when, anytime you go against the field, you gain voltage. So I gain voltage here. I don't lose any here because there's no current through here right now. So if there's no current, there's no voltage drop. So all my voltage drop is across that switch. So whatever the voltage drop is across the capacitor, that's the voltage drop across the switch. Okay, when I close this switch, um, you see these electrons, they are going to zip on over here and, um, and neutralize these positive charges. Now, they will zip through here, but this is going to resist them doing that too fa in, in too fast of a manner. So it's just going it, to, the bigger this is, the longer it's going to take for this to neutralize. And um, same thing with the capacitance. The bigger the capacitance is, the less it's going to um, want to, the, the less in hurry, of a hurry it's going to be to go around to the other side. So if this is a little capacitor and we got the same charge on this little baby capacitor, then those electrons are, are under a very high pressure situation where they want to get out of there. So if it's a little capacitor, they fly around and discharge this a little faster. So the um, so what happens is when you close this switch, um, this starts to discharge. But here's here's the thing is that after a few of the electrons have left, then the electrons that are remaining, they're no longer as in much of a hurry to get over to the other side. And so as the electrons deplete on this plate, the rate at which they leave the plate actually goes down. Okay, I'll say that one more time. The rate as these electrons, the amount of electrons decrease on this plate, the rate at which they want to leave the plate goes down. Um, and so, like, if I were going to show you the charge on the capacitor as time goes on, um, it starts out at Q0, and then it decays. It's going to decay. But um, it's never going to, you know, it's going to always be it's going to always be um, decaying, but it's never reaching zero because as as time goes on, there'll be less charges on here and it'll be less and less in a hurry to, to um, actually go to the other side. Okay, well, um, remember that um, the charge is, if I were going to graph the current through here, it's going to start out very large. And then it's going to um, die out too. So the current will start out real large. In fact, the initial current, I naught, should be whatever the current is across here at T equals zero. So the moment you close the switch, the, the current that will be in here um, is, well, let's talk about the voltage drop across here. The moment you close the switch, the voltage across here has to equal the voltage across there. So I, let me find the voltage across here at T equals zero. So at T equals zero, um, I'm thinking that the voltage across here of C equals Q naught over V, then, and that'd be V naught, bring the V naught on the other side. V naught is equal to Q naught over C. So that's, that's what the initial voltage is across here. And it's also the initial voltage across here because of the loop rule. 
And so um, if you want to know what the original, the original I will be, it will be the voltage divided by R. So that will be the original voltage Q over um, CR, Q naught over CR. Okay, so that, that's how Q naught and I naught will be. You can also graph um, the voltage across here. The voltage is going to drop. So if I wanted to graph the voltage across the, the capacitor, it's going to drop. And how about the voltage across the resistor? It should match this graph. It's going to drop. All these things are going to decay. These are all decay graphs. In fact, if I wanted to guess what this would be, any decay graph, it's going to be I equals I naught E to the negative some constant. I'll just call it um, K for right now times T. We'll figure out what that constant is in another video. But it's going to decay. So this would be Q equals Q naught E to the negative um, K times t. All right, now how about charging a capacitor? How does that work? Okay, so um, same idea. Here's a, a capacitor that's originally uncharged. Okay, now um, if it's uncharged, then at t equals zero, when this switch is open, let's see, the voltage across here is E. That's the EMF of the battery is E. And so when I go up E, I got to come down E. Across this switch is E of vol the voltage. Like if this is 3 volts, this is 3 volts because there's no voltage across here because there's no current. And there's no voltage across here because it's not charged. So how do you get voltage here? I times R. How do you get it here? It's Q over C. Okay. So, uh, but the moment I close this, when I close this, what happens is um, the charge is going to um, I suppose you can talk about it as electrons. Electrons are going to gather on this plate, which will push electrons away from this plate and make that positive. And again, it depends on how the bigger the R is, the, the, the slower it's going to happen. And um, the, the bigger the C is, the, the, if, at, the bigger the C is, the longer it's going to take to charge. Okay, so um, let's see if we could guess what the graphs on these are going to be. As soon as you close the switch, if I were going to graph for you what happens to the charge on the capacitor with time, well, um, it's going to go to some final capacitance, uh, namely, um, it's going to go to some final charge. The final charge will be C times E. Um, and I'm getting that because C equals Q over V. And so if I um, bring the V on the other side, then the final charge um, will, be, will be C times E because when this is totally charged, there'll be no more current in this resistor. Let me stress that when the current flows through here, it's not flowing through the capacitor. The current that flows through here is actually gathering on the capacitor. That charge that charges gathering on the capacitor. It doesn't go through the capacitor. Okay, so um, I'm thinking that when, as this charges, it's going to, um, it's going to charge up to some final charge, and it's going to take some time to do that. Now, here's the reason why. The first instance you close the switch, when this is not charged, this is almost like an open switch. A capacitor that's uncharged, it, it behaves like a wire in a circuit. And then as soon as it gains a little charge, it starts pushing back. So the, the charges that are trying to get on there, it starts pushing them the other way. And so what happens is your current at initially, when you close this, it, there's no voltage across here because there's no charge. And so your voltage drop is all across here. So you get this big current at first and then it swooshes down close to zero okay so as this charges up though it pushes back and so you get less current through there so that's how rc circuits work i'll show you the math in the next video